Hi again, it's Chrissy Hughes um, for part two of this kind of homespun team building brief. So the second part, which I think will work well for team building is a section from our mind body resilience training. It might have a different name soon, but it's a new resiliency training that um, emphasizes mental toughness. Um, and we Fleet and Family has worked in conjunction with the Naval Center for Combat and Operational Stress Continuum and BUMED to kind of take resiliency factors um, to use in leadership training. Um, so when we might have friction with people who we work with, who we are in relationships with, who are, we are related to, it might be because we actually have, a diff we have different values than they do. Now, for example, I'm in San Diego right now. If I was released from my house and there wasn't a restriction on where I could go and I wanted to go to Florida, for example, I would know I'm going towards Florida because there would be certain landmarks along the way that would tell me I was going east, like Albuquerque, Dallas, New Orleans. I would know that I was going east based on my direction. Now, values should be our guiding compass. That means that I have a value of service. So I want to actually help others. And I, I've always been in service roles. I've been a teacher um, most of my life. And now I work at Fleet and Family. So I work to serve other people. So if I have a value of service, along my way to my value, I might pass things like helping out when during an underway while a ship's underway. Um, helping someone in a crisis situation, um, standing up an infas or a fixie or helping out an emergency response. Those would be goals that I would pass along my way to my value. I'll never actually have service till I'm dead, I keel over, but I will be constantly working towards my goal and my value and my goals will be the landmarkers to know that I am pointed in my direction. People will have stress Bottom line, people will have stress in their life when they are not feeling that they are living true to their values, okay? So values are very important. Now we have a values assessment. You have to reach out to us because it's long. It's about three pages long where you can kind of read about what values are, assess them, and then kind of determine what your top values are. So in lieu of that, I've written a few on this board here, okay? So say, for example, that I am an active duty service member. I'm not, by the way. I'm married to one. Um, I'm a spouse, which is a whole different kind of service. I have a duty as an active duty service member. I want to serve my country, and I also feel a sense of adventure with that, okay? So I want to serve my country, and I want to see the world. That's kind of what a lot of uh, recruiters tell you, right? So that is my job. That's what I'm doing with the military. That's why I joined the Navy. Along the way, though, I fell in love and I got in a relationship with someone who really appreciates stability. Okay? Stab oh, the Navy's really stable. You get a paycheck every month. It goes up as you uh, increase in rank. Um, you might get a pension. You might have some nice retirement later on. So I was really attracted to the lifestyle but my value of stability also means that I want to be around my friends and my family, and I also don't like moving a whole lot. But opposites attract. So me as a spouse might still always have a value of stability, but I might be attracted to someone who has a value of adventure and a value of service. So some, consider that sometimes when you have friction with someone in your workspace or in your personal life, it might be that you have different values. And none of these supersede any others. Again, I have a lot more values, so if you don't uh, resonate with any of these, let me know if you have, have more. Um, I like to tell a story. There's about hundreds of thousands, millions of people who are in this situation right now. I like to tell a story about how during the 2008 financial crisis, I got laid off. I was a public educator at the time. I went and worked in hospitality. Um, and I learned through that process that my value in the end, service is important to me, but industry is really important to me too. No matter what I do, no matter what job I'm supposed to be doing, what job I can do, I want to be known for doing a good job at what I do. 
So industry is really important to me. I also want people to tell me if I'm not doing a good job, okay? But that's not everybody. Not everybody has that value. So think about within your unit, within your department, how you might have a different value than someone else. So one, another really common one in the military is I have a value of duty and a value for change, okay? But my family really values wealth. So they don't understand it. Why do you keep doing this? Why do you keep doing this? It's because deep down, deep suited, we have different values and that's okay. But understanding that when you are not living to your value, you will have stress in your life. I'm also a mother of three. So when I'm away from my children for too long, I feel an undue amount of stress, a very high amount of stress from being separated from my children. Um, the challenge as in leadership is to find out what each of your subordinates, each of your um, co-workers values are because they are also their motivating factors. Does that make sense? So knowing that someone else really appreciates wealth, we might want to also enroll them in something like some financial courses. If, they're, if their income is stagnant, maybe we can enroll them in some financial courses to better manage their money. Or we have other financial courses at Fleen Family that are, are about starting your own home business. There's no reason, unless you are not allowed to, that you can't you know, have a side hustle, okay? That's a good idea as well. But know and take the time to get to know the people within your unit to get a general idea of what their values are or ask them, you know? Have you ever thought about you know, what you value most in life? What is it that makes you uh, attracted to the military lifestyle? Um, Ask those kind of questions and then you'll understand more about what makes people tick, all right? So the last thing I have, again, from my Simon Sinek book, it's not the work we remember with fondness, but the camaraderie ship of how the group came together to get things done, okay? Remember your values, remember the circle of trust, Remember how your hormones are related to how you build relationships and how you feel threatened at work. And realize too that sometimes people's values conflict with the Navy values. And we need to find a way to kind of bridge the gap between our organizational values and our personal values. So reach out to me if you have any more questions. Um, again, thank you for reaching out to Fleet and Family. If you have any other, um, if you want any of those supplemental materials, this is the best way to reach me, christina.d.hughes.ctr at navy.mil. Thanks for sticking with me. Bye.